The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. There's a girl, she's a star, she's got style, Steffi Star, you see her face around the town, she's popular, Steffi Star. Hey everybody, I'm Meredith Keach and this is the show and we're here with John Katie, author. Hello. <laughs> this is, uh, okay, so first I just want to preface this with, so as you know, I taught English as well and to be in your presence, a friend who teaches and actually did it, you wrote a book, you've written two, well you've written, I know you've written a bunch of other yeah. stuff, but it's hitting it out of the ballpark now yeah it's doing pretty good it's still even that the first book i you know i check amazon like all the time which i'm not supposed you know it's yeah. i get in my own head and i'm yeah. like and when it's not when the number doesn't change i'm like well what happened you know <laughs> that they don't love me anymore but it's yeah. no but then like the other day like i'll see a random one was sold like because you know the numbers change and i'm like Who's buying it? Like, yes. who, you know, you, yes. You now you become a salesman. Yeah, you have it in your head. You're like, it's not friends anymore. It's like whoever, yes. you know. Yes. Well, that's what so, we were talking about earlier about yeah. the podcast. Like, you need Barbara in Nebraska to buy it. But, all right, Barbara, get on that. Get on it, right? <laughs> you, where we have, <clears throat> you hit that that friend and your sphere of influence threshold, right? Yeah. So everybody around you buys it. You tell them, buy my book, buy my book, and then it's when it starts going out further and further. Yeah, yep. it's incredible. So, I have so many questions, but why don't you just start with giving our audience a little introduction about yourself and um, and 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 the history before and, and why you wrote this book? Because that to me is the magical piece of it. Um, so let let us hear about okay. it. Okay. Well, uh, um, so I'm a teach an English teacher at a juvenile detention center. So all my students are they're incarcerated. So I've been teaching there. This is going into my 17th year. And the funny thing about that is I don't even, and my boss still gives me a hard time. Well, not hard time, but jokes with me that I, I didn't remember applying for the job. <laughs> like I thought I was just going to like an alternative school. I knew it wasn't a regular like high school, so, but I thought it was an alternative school. So I get in there and like all these bars are slamming shut behind me. Wow. And like I see a kid walking down the hall like in handcuffs. I'm like, where am I? Where? <laughs> like this wasn't a good idea and then but i'm thinking you know every movie like dangerous mind all these different movies like yeah. went through my head i'm like i'm not ready for that like so how old are they they are my youngest student has is i've had a kid that was just turning 14 i've had a kid wow. that uh was 21 aged out and went home so it's wow it's one of those things where uh it's just it's all across the board and what are they what are kids in what why does a kid get put in jail uh, just bad choices, you know, not great decisions. And some of them, like I always tell my my kid, my own kids, I say, you know, they they're just like you, but they just, you know, they made some unfortunate decisions that hopefully they can bounce back from. It's all about the bounce back with them. Got so. it. And they're being rehabilitated while they're there. They're yeah. in school. Mm -hmm. So they they have school can... and they uh, they meet with uh, clinicians and therapists. And whatnot, and and so that's basically they also learn a great deal from the staff. They like the I call them security guards. They're not tech, that's not their title, but they they group workers. But they uh, they basically they protect everyone and they they help the kids grow. Basically, they said so, you know they they're just as much they're just as much of a like a um I don't want to say like a parent, but like they help foster the kids along as, as much as I do, as much as the uh, clinicians do. It's all like it's all a team trying to get these kids to get back out there and not make the same uh, choices they made. Wow. So. I, I Just getting my arms around the idea of my kid actually being taken out of our house and having to go to jail is just incomprehensible. I mean, it's just same. Yeah. mind blowing. Really yeah. is. And they've got to go figure it out. Yeah. Basically, you mature real fast, I imagine. Yeah. It's funny. My son, so... Years ago, when he was like, um, I don't even know how many years, ago, probably like four or five years ago now, he was heavy into Batman, he still is, but it was back then, he's like, 
are your students like villains? Everything in his head, everything's like the Joker, or the Penguin. I'm like, no, no, they're regular kids. They just, you know, they made some decisions they shouldn't have made. Right. So, and products you know. in their environment. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's a big part of it too. It's um, it's one of those things where my kids are, for, you know, kids are fortunate to grow up in an area where they can escape a lot. Of, don't even have to escape from anything. It's just not. You know, a lot of the stuff that these kids deal with is not in our town. Like, right. you know, I'm sure if it is, it's in, you know, small amounts of it. But, yeah. you know, the, every town has its problems. But just, you know, it's and every kid faces their problems. But these kids, a lot of them, some of the environments they come from, those problems are just everywhere that you look. Every way you turn around is something that they have to deal with. And they don't always cope with it the right way. And that's sometimes that that's where the difficult choices. I mean, the... Not difficult, but that's where the it is difficult. But that's where the um, the poor choices come through. And so, if if I go to jail at fourteen, am I automatically out at eighteen, or there is there a population of kids who then from eighteen have to go to a different jail? They, sometimes they have to go to like uh, they call it big boy. Sometimes they have to go on to uh, you know regular prison because if they depending on how serious their crime is. <sighs> That's heavy. Yeah, a lot of gun charges. Oh, a lot of guns out there. Like it's one of those things. It's not, and it's not, you know, it's not a, like a political. It's just like there's a lot of guns out there right. that kids can get their hands on, unfortunately. But that it's one of those things they don't, you know. And it's not they're not they're obviously at that age they're not getting it legally. They're getting it, however, you know. Right. So, but that's that's just so I'm just saying that because of the severity of the crimes. Like yep. a lot of them have those crimes and some of them use those guns and those are the sometimes those are the kids that end up like going moving on to not home but another killing people yeah, yeah or going to or if they've already tried that they, they'll go to like prison probably at some point okay so you we have kids similar age yeah compare the pers- just the day to day i know you say that they're they're kids just like you guys but they're not what are some of the differences that you see? Um, just a lot of them, they won't admit they're in a gang, but they're gang. Like we find the background information, like they're gang affiliated. But so that that takes on a whole new culture. Like if you're not in that culture, it's a whole different world. Like if you're out there, they're a lot of them are just trying to like they're surviving. So in their mind, to survive, I gotta make sure the other guy can't hurt me and to make sure the other guy can't hurt me, I got to hurt him. You know, it's one of those, it's a, a cycle that you can't, you almost can't come up to breathe from it. Some, some kids sound like that's, you know, like it doesn't go away. Whereas like, you know, these kids, my son can go out and ride a, like he'll disappear on a Saturday for four hours, riding a bike wherever. And he'll tell us where he's going. But like, it's one of those things he can do that. Whereas if I lived in a, area where there was a lot of violence or whatnot i would not i'd have to like i'd really have to get to the point where i'm like yeah i guess you can you know but just be careful you know it's one of those things it's not the same be careful that i give him when i'm when he's like riding around this town right you know it's one of those so it's a whole it seems like a different reality and one, then so when they come in they're in uh uh are they so will i find uh my gang in prison too um, depends on how big it is. Like you have your bigger gangs, you have your gangs that are just your street, you know. So it's it's a lot of cities have just their street or their block or whatever is, is their gang. But then there's other, you know, the bigger ones like the Bloods, the Crips, or like and you know a host of others. And those are the ones that infiltrate it because they're incarcerated yeah. as well. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of times that happens, but a lot of it's still like. Like I said, like blocks and like those, some streets that just have beef with another street forever. It doesn't matter if they even know a kid on that street by name or by the kid's personality. You're on that street. That's enough for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's one of those. And they come in, they're still in survival mode when they get to us. You know, it's not some more often than not, they're in their own head. And that's not really a, it, we make it a safe environment. Like it's, it's very Compared to what they're used to, it's a very safe environment they come into, but they're still in survival mode. And especially when you're a teenager, if you're in that mode, you're in that mode, you know. Right. It takes a while, I'm sure, to get out of it. So. And they know they're going back to it. Yeah. I mean, they try it. So the percentage of, like, not reoffending is, 
I don't know. I think the last time I saw it, it was like 20%. But when I started teaching there, it was, someone said it was 10%. So, uh. so it jumped up. I mean, it improved. While 20% is still low, it, it improved by 10%. You know, it doubled. We have kids the same age and kids who are the age of the students that you teach who are incarcerated. And what's their mindset like? Like, how are they different from our kids? Mm -hmm. And John was just saying, you know, his son might go out and ride his bike for four hours. When you live in a gang dominant area, you can't do that safely. And so right. the gangs, as far as the kids are concerned, provide protection for them. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> and and so he was saying that once they get into jail in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's they're in survival mode. Which is just, it's hard for me to get my arms around. I, um, I just want to, would want to hug them. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. It's one of those things where you, it just like, I don't know, like I joke around with them all. Like they see, my personality you see, they see every day. You know, it's one of yeah. those things where, so it's just, I don't, even if I'm having a tough day, I don't go in there with it. I go in there with like, you know, cause, like this, because it just gives them someone like they're not, not that they don't let their, they don't let their defenses down, but they joke around and stuff. And yeah. you try to just make it as, as not like that life as you can. You right. Know, you what know. age group are we talking about? So my youngest student was, had like, he just, was turning 14 when he got there. And then I've had a kid, and this is a rare one, I've had a kid that was 21 when he left us, so. Like, yeah. grew up in jail. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was there, I bet he was there four years. Do they have happy times in there? Oh yeah, yeah, so they'll have, um, they'll have a lot of like family events and whatnot where their family can come. We do that once a month. And other than that, like it's, they'll do like game nights and all these different, you know, they try to, they try to, especially staff, they try to make it as, I guess, as fun as you can. Like, yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, you want to, it's not prison, so you want them to make sure, you know, what you want the kids to feel like kids as much as you can. You yeah. Know? What is so. it? It's not like San Quentin? No, <laughs> no. It's a, ju it's a juvenile detention center. Juvenile detention yeah. center. So he said a lot of, yeah. lot of them have. Um, guns and some of them use them they made bad decisions oh yeah so where you and I might make bad decisions they don't have life consequences thankfully right right okay so now you have mm -hmm. um, this population of kids and um, what were you what do you teach them what types of books so I basically I do like right now, we're doing of mice and men, but so I basically do. I, we follow the same like frameworks and standards as public schools. That okay. way, when they leave us, they're they're caught up with wherever they are, where wherever they would be in public school. A lot of them, admittedly, tell me they're like, "I don't go to school when I'm on the out," and I'm like, "Well, you should." Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's one of those things. Right. Some of them in some of them aren't allowed in schools. So oh, but they they are provided an education. They're just not allowed in certain schools. So it depends on the charges. But I'll read so of mice and men. We'll read a reason in the sun. Then we'll bring. We try to. I try to bring in more more books that are like nowadays books, basically. So yeah. it's like they they're tired of reading the old stuff, but yeah. the some of them love the old. Like some of them eat up of mice and men and all that stuff. But, they do. Yeah, but other than that, like yeah, we try to. My company that I work for, they bring in like all high interest books, like like newer ones for them. So we'll read, you know, we'll read a few of those here and there. As long as they follow the same themes, then it's getting, the kids are more engaged if it's books that are written nowadays, it seems. But. Do you find that a lot of your students would be on IEPs? Not as many as I think. Like, it, it ranges, really, because I'm in detention. So my, my same 15, like, the most I have is, like, 15 students at a time. That changes as often. Like, they'll be five new kids before the end of the month. And, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes I do, and then it all depends on how long I have, you know, some kids, so for example, maybe a third of them right now do, but there's been times when over half of them have. So. Okay. Oh, wow, that must present a lot of challenges teaching-wise. If you have on any given month, you know, five new kids at once. Yeah, well, it, it can, especially with a novel. But we find you gotta you find ways around it. So well, I'll always do like a 
a catch up, especially if we have new kids. I'll do like a catch up, you know, what's happened so far in the novel. Just a quick thing that we write, that I have the other kids write on the board, and they'll tell these kids what's been going on in the in the book. So it's you gotta you gotta work around it. Like tricks tricks of the trade in there are different from when I was teaching in public school. So it's you know you have to yeah. deal with stuff like that. So now I know I missed the whole beginning, but your dad's Mr. Katie. Yes, and he taught at Sharon High. We yes. didn't touch on that. Oh, yeah. but I am a graduate of Sharon High. Okay, 1985. And I could did did your dad teach English? What no, if, he taught science. He taught science. I think he taught a little bit at the high school, but he mostly most of his forty two years he taught at uh, middle Sharon Middle School. Oh, okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember if I I know Mr. Katie. Yeah. And I think I had Mr. Katie, but I can't really remember if I had Mr. <laughs> Katie. But I remember everyone loved Mr. Katie. Is your dad still living? Yes. He is. Yep. He must be so proud of you. He is. He is. Yeah, he's he's pretty proud. Yeah, they both he and my mom both pretty proud. Yeah. And my siblings. So so exciting. So yeah. we're just building up to like how do you get to a point of writing a book like right. this in conversation? Um and so okay, so that's your your population. Mm-hmm. At what point do you say I need to write a book for them? So I was I've been trying to I mean, I've been writing things for like 25 years but nothing not you know, not no agents wanted anything. Yeah. Like especially well, so I'm I I've always my favorite book's Catcher in the Rye. So I've been trying to write like Catcher in the Rye for like ever. And then uh I so when my students a lot of my students like um they they don't read a lot, but sometimes they do in there just because it kills time, yeah, right. time. So I had one group that was big on fantasy. And so and they also like these books called the Blue Fret High books, which are they Mostly inner city stories, like kids, like the stories take place in their environments and whatnot. So they they said so they, they love those books and they love the fantasy. And I said one day I was like, oh, do you guys love fantasy? Huh? And, and one kid says, yeah, you know, and they're buried, their heads are like buried in it. And he said, but he goes, I can't really relate to the heroes in it. And, and I'm like, oh, well, what do you mean? And he goes, he said, well, I just, you know, Katniss, Harry Potter, but, you know, they all have that theme of they're not from the hoods. They're right, not, right, right. You know, they're not of, they're not a minority. They're not from the, you know, the whole across the board, basically. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, but, you know, but then they'll say, but the themes are all the same. Like I can connect with them because, you know, whatever he goes through, like I I know I've been through similar things, but not the exact same thing, but I've had the same feelings that he's had. And so they can relate to them. And then it's um on that level, but I'm like, oh, I wish. I wish you, in my mind, I'm like, I wish you guys had, um, well, I told him, I was like, I wish you guys had a, a fantasy book that you could relate to that maybe even, you know, kind of blended in with the other thing, like the Blue Bird Eye thing. And one, because, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm like, well, good luck with that. You know, but I'm like, <laughs> cause I, I don't write fantasy and I don't, I can't write, so I can't relate to Blue Bird Eye because I don't, I didn't grow up in areas like that. So I, it would just, I wouldn't even try that. Yeah. And then fantasy, I like, I couldn't create worlds in my, and so I'm like, It'll just come across stupid. It's just going to come across dumb. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, good luck. Hope you guys get that. And so it's one of those things where I had a, it wasn't that night because that'd be too much of a Hollywood movie type thing. But <laughs> like within the next month or so, I had a dream one night where I was literally in a nursing home, like the, a room like kind of like my grandmother was in, but one when, when before she died. And there was like an old guy I'd never seen in my life, like laying in the bed. And I'm just sitting there with him. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to, you know, it's. You don't know you're in a dream, so I'm like, I'm just here. But and then like this girl, then young lady comes in that she's dressed, she's like she's Latina, she's dressed in kind of like the clothes that you would see like in some of those movies, like the and she comes in, kisses the dude on the forehead, and I'm like, what is happening? And then all of a sudden he dies or whatever. I'm like, and she looks at me and then walks out of the room. I'm like, what the hell? And then I I get up and I'm like, I write everything down in a notebook. Drives my wife nuts. She's like. Just put it in your phone on the notes. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. In case I hit delete by accident, I can't. And so I get up, and I'm looking at it the next day, and I'm like, this might be something. Mm. This might, And then it ended up being, like, chapter two of the book. So I'm like, oh. I'm like, I might have this thing for them. So I started writing that <clears throat> literally just for them. Like, I mean, I wanted everybody to read it, but mm-hmm. it was like they were my target audience. Like, couldn't be any more of a target. Right. And so um, I wrote that, and then for... I shopped it. This was like 10 years ago. So I shopped it around to all these agents and all of them were like, nope, nobody wants angels. Nobody wants. And I'm like, people want angels. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, 
no, we're agents. We know, you know, with, you know, we know what the bo- the book market is right now. It's, you know, can you write about like werewolves and, and vampires? I'm like, Twilight? No. Mm. I'm like, right. No. Yeah. This is my book I wrote. Yeah. A, Twilight's already been written. Right. You know, and like, B, I can't. It sounds dumb. Like, if I try to do that, it's going to be dumb. Right. You know, it, but it's one of those things. I, I wrote that and I shopped it around forever and ever and then nothing came of it. And then one day on Facebook, I saw this guy. So he's my Joshua Lloyd Fox. He's the. He's my publisher, but he's also an author, very talented author. And so he had written these Archangel missions, and I'm like, Angel? And so, like, I saw that on my feed, and so I messaged him. I'm like, I got this idea. Well, I mean, not idea. I wrote the book, but I'm like, here's the synopsis. Would you be interested in this? And he said, he goes, you brilliant bastard. Send it over. And I'm like, yes. That was it. I'm like, screw you, agents. Wow. (laughs) Look at that. From 10 years ago. Right. I don't hold a grudge. You know, but it's like one of those things where... He he lo- he read it. he like he started reading it. He loved it, and he's like he's like I want to publish it. I was like, oh great! And he goes, uh, can I break it into two books or whatever? And I'm like, absolutely. And so he um, he broke it into the two books, and then he posted the when he was posting on Facebook about the first one. He said, first book in a trilogy, and I'm like, ooh trilogy! And he goes, yep. And I'm like, better get writing <laughs> right. on the third one. Like I didn't even picture going right. on further with it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, but then. That's fantasy, like fantasy series. You have to have like more than right. You at least have to have three, I guess. So it's well, right. and I'll say the characters. So obviously, um, oh. I haven't read the book two yet, but yeah, you can have those. And I see we have how copies. Yay! I see how uh, you you get engaged. You commit to these characters and and want more it's almost like like watching a reality tv show where where you you start to know them you know their personality and that's what the book feels like too it's not like a beginning a middle and an end and and then then that's it and you're done and you move on with your life you it rolls in and so i'm eager to read the next one oh good which i i love that too and so it makes sense to me. It's it's a storyline of these characters' lives and you get to know them. The other piece that right out of the gate, I love how you explore death. Yeah, so I it's fun so that when you would when you would mess with me, I was yeah. like, I was like, Oh and then and then someone else, like no, like two other people said similar things and I'm like, Oh, I didn't even it's one of those, you know, happy accident well, talking about death, not happy you know, but it's like yeah. one of those things I'm like that was totally not intended, but you know, I was just trying to tell a story, and then someone like a couple of you and a couple of other readers, like I said, they like peeling it back, and I'm like, I didn't think it was that deep, but okay. Look at you. <laughs> like, well, the thing- but then that that you alone, like, based more mostly your comment to me about it, I was like, that kind of guided me in the in the third book. Like, well, I was like, I was like, oh. Meredith's comment guided yeah. you in the third book. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, it kind of, I was like, well, you got to keep going with that. If people, you know, if three, it people, resonates, if three people notice that and it mm-hmm. resonates with them, then you just got to, maybe that's something you just got to keep exploring. Yes. It is. And, and especially with the, the, the younger or younger age groups yeah. too. But so basically I said to him like it, that piece resonated because so mm-hmm. much of our culture, we don't want to die. Right. I mean, medicine does everything that they can to keep us from dying and we don't talk about it. And it's like a bad thing. But it's something we all do. Right. Right. And yes, it's sad when our loved ones die and we have the death duel on and you can get weepy about the people that you you've lost and missed. But everyone in this room is going to die. We all do it. It's part of living. It's part of our existence. And you just the and, and even in a book. The the pivotal moment will be when the person dies and then everybody, you know, goes on, you know, afterwards and, and that's it. But in your book, a lot of people die. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And 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 it's not like, yes, it's tragic circumstances, but it, in the way that you portray it, it's part of life. And particularly for these characters, it's part of their existence and there are consequences and things that happen as a result of someone dying. And then, then those that have died. Yeah. Right. And they're part of 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 the book as well coming back in um i love that you've done that i really do and i don't know other books that really explored in that capacity in that way in a day-to-day life 
Um, but I would think too for middle and high schoolers to read it. I haven't had my kids read it yet. Um, it would it would resonate with them in a very different way. Yeah. Right. I would think. Yeah. How did your kids receive it? Your students. They so it was funny. Like they when I brought the uh, the books in or whatever they they you know they grabbed them like right away and they're like. They they started they brought them right back they they call it their hut their room they're like can I bring this back to the hut I'm like that's yours I'm like I you know it's one of those things and then and so they all a bunch of them brought not every kid but like a bunch of them brought it back and they and they read it in like a week or whatever and yeah. um, and the staff was like they don't read anything in like a week you know they flow wow. through this and, yeah. and so they you know they none of them had a negative word to say like I was all set for like corny like you're like john you're 40 something you're you yeah. know you're, you know you don't even know this life. you know i was waiting for you don't know this life you didn't really get it right in it but they said you know one kid said it was fire another kid said it was tough and i'm like tough to read and he goes <laughs> no just tough and i'm like i look at the at one of his uh, classmates and he's like good thing <laughs> i'm like tough okay. you know it's one of those and, and so uh Generally, like they liked it, and they liked the second one, so they're looking forward to the third one. They're like, "Well, the third one, you must have it for us already." I'm like, "No," and then they're like, "But it's for us." And I'm like, "I know, but you know, it's one." And I dedicated the second book to the students I've had and the ones I'm gonna have. So it's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, they so far they they've liked it, and then it's funny when a kid, um, if I get a new kid. So one time we we get a uh, new kid, and and he was looking at, he's like, "Can I look at the books on the shelf?" And I'm like, "Yep." And so, and he goes over, and, and I was joking around like uh, that was on the shelf, and, and I go, I hear good things about this one. <laughs> and and uh, he goes, oh, and he's like looking at the back of it or whatever, and he's like, he, this my pictures, and he's like, what? <laughs> and, I'm, and the kid, and he's like, I'm not gonna read that. And then one of the other kids is like, no, no, you're gonna want to read that. So I'm like, well, they wow. must get a big kick out of it too because you're an author and they you're do. their teacher. Yeah, they used and I used they used to make fun of me like so. I started out writing horror. Well, I didn't start out. I started out writing like young adult and like yeah. middle grade stuff. But then my wife's cousin had said, you know, one time he goes, he goes, you should write horror because like horror anthologies, like they'll take short stories. You don't need an agent. You can just, mm. they go after strength of your writing. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I don't even like, I don't even like horror. I don't watch horror. You know, not that I'm afraid of horror. Just, well, some of the movies I am, but I'm like, I'm a lot, petrified. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't watch horror. And he goes, uh, he goes, well, they and I go. I definitely don't write hard, and and so he said, "Well, they pay, and and they'll put it. You know, it'll end up on shelves and shop, bookshops." I'm like, "All right, yeah, no, I write hard." So, I'm like, <laughs> and so my sister Kara, uh, she's my beta reader, and for anyone who's not familiar with the term, it's just like that's the person that reads it before anybody else does and tells you if it's garbage or if it's good. Who is it? Your wife is? No, my sister uh, Kara. Oh, your sister. Yeah. So she's been for like 25 years. She's been my beta reader, but she. So I told her, I'm like, I gave her the short story that I was going to submit for a horror thing. And she goes, it's good writing, but you didn't kill anybody. I'm like, yeah, I don't, you don't need to kill anybody. She goes, it's horror. You, you do. <laughs> you really do. And I'm That's like, what people are waiting for. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to kill anybody. She's like, well, you don't want to write horror then. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. So and then, the, you know, long story short, that got published. And then, um, you know, I've had like, maybe like 20 something horror stories probably which is weird to me because i don't write horror yeah you know but it's like when they, i found it, like for a while it was fun and then uh so my students some of them they watch horror all the time so they were reading some of the like they were reading some of the short stories and i i wouldn't have my name on it so they didn't know what it was at first and so i'm like hey this is pretty <laughs> this is pretty good huh and they're like no they're like, this is supposed to be scary. And I'm like, it's kind of scary. And they're like, no. This sucks. Yeah. Basically, they're like, they're like, this is this is not scary at all. Like, what is it? Like, it was like, Hall I always do it right before Halloween. They're like, what is this? I'm like, it's a scary story. And it's like, soft horror. Yeah. Soft. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, this is lifetime horror. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's different levels of horror. Yeah. But... So what's the process? So, so uh, I forget your publisher's name. Josh, Joshua Lloyd. Fox. Josh. Okay, so Josh says, "Yeah, winning. I love your book." And then what happens? Like, what what so are their steps? Then they um he has a his wife is an editor. Like she's very talented editor. Like she took my that that final thing is not even it's not exactly how I wrote it, but like she 
cleaned it up to the point where I'm like, ooh, this is better than what I had. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, well, that's her job. You know, mm, she's a real right. good editor. But uh, so she did a great job with that. And he, they have a, a cover artist who came up with those. And I don't know what I was picturing in my own head. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, my gosh, that is. They nailed it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, they not even nailed Like, they, it's like I could have imagined anything I could imagine that would have been cool. They cranked it up a little bit further than that in the coolness. So I'm like, this is unbelievable. So, and then num- book two was uh, like, that cover is awesome. And he's like, you wait till you see what we have in mind for book three. I'm like, I can't wait. Have you started book three? I have. So I go, I, I've started writing book three. It's, I had two different ideas for it. So it's kind of branching off with the, um, with two of the other characters in the book. Cause he, like he's, he said, uh, he goes, you know, well, it, one of the things in fantasy is like you can, especially when it's working towards this huge war at the end. He's like, you got to explore some of the other characters. So I was like, flash them out and stuff. I said, like, all right. So when do you write? What's your routine? So after my wife and kids go to bed, that's when I write. Like I don't want it to take away from family time. So where do you sit? I sit usually at my dining room table. With a yeah. computer or pen and paper. So typewriter. I, will, I I have a little notebook that I'll. I'll write in that. I'll write all you know a few pages, however many you know, however many pages I can get in into that, and then I'll go over and then I'll t- I'll start typing it. And that way, I'm pretty much like editing it as I'm typing it or okay. re- revising it. So, and then my cat's right there trying to like hit all the you know oh, buttons yeah. on right. the keyboard. So it's like every it's night, like a routine. Yeah, I try to every night. Anyways, how, how do you long? find the inspiration? Yeah. to write every night. Um, sometimes it's only a paragraph. I don't get like, sometimes I'll get like multiple pages. Sometimes it's just a paragraph. So it's not always, it's not always like, uh, the ideas don't always come to me like right away or even like come to me in general, like a good amount of ideas. But if, even if one paragraph, I just got to dedicate that time, like an hour to that every night. That way it's like, however I fill that hour with it, at least I'm dedicating that an hour to it. So, right. The repetition brings yeah. brings the yeah, and then sometimes I'll be drive like I'll be driving home from work and I'll be like crap, and like all of a sudden the ideas will start flowing. Then I'm like oh no, and then I'll pull over into like BJ's parking lot, right. like, looking like a creep in my car. I'm like don't worry about me. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, that's better because my yeah. inspiration comes in the shower. Okay, so I'm like shit because I'm showering and I can't do anything, so yeah. I have to like remember everything that I thought of. Something with water it inspires me. Hey, whatever works. Aren't you tired at the end of the day? Um, I am, but it's one of those things where it's either I watch Love Is Blind, yeah, or I don't know, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Ninety Day Fiance. Yeah. It's either I watch TV for like an hour, or I just try to write for the hour. So yep. it's, you know, some or then I'll watch TV afterwards. So I but. feel kind of inspired. Totally. Thanks. Now I feel like I just want to, even if I journal. I feel like I just want to do something for an hour. Get a little notebook. Literally, my notebook yeah. is, is that big and it's right in the front pocket. Do you have a special pen? No. I still I steal pens wherever. Like, that pen's probably not safe. I steal pens wherever I, <laughs> wherever I go. And so, Adam, take yeah. note. So my, my, my wife's like, was like, uh, she makes fun of me for it. And like, my first week teaching where I taught, like, the program director, he's like, he's like, John, get a pen I can borrow? And I'm like, uh. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. and then so he, he's borrowed it and he's writing something, walking away, like still writing. And I'm like, whoa, 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 pen. whoa. I come back with my pen. And then the other part of me is like, idiot, there's other pens. Just like that's your, that's like the program director, like the warden, basically. He's like, you let him have the pen. But I'm like, nah, like they, I get, they get the angel and the devil. And I'm like, nah, yeah, that's your pen. You get that pen. You and get then, that pen right now. And then like a week later, I saw him in the hallway and I'm like, hey, so last, and I felt like George Costanza. I'm like, so last week you kind of borrowed a pen. From me. I'm like, if I, he's like, oh, I didn't get, I didn't get that back in. I'm like, no. And then, so he literally went into his office and got it for me. And he's like, here you go. And I'm like, thanks. And the, meanwhile, I'm like, you're an idiot. You have had two pens since then. You don't need that. And it's like a bick. It's nothing. It's nothing crazy. It's like it's nothing like you can't replace. I know what you should ask for for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well. 
that, well, I steal them all. I don't need to, you know, no one needs to buy them from me. I just steal them. <laughs> oh, you steal them from other people, but nobody can steal them from you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I exactly. get it. To your credit, I get it. If there were a pile of pencils and pens right here, we would all have our choices of what we like, right? And right. you write a lot. So yeah. you having biases towards a particular pen makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, Thank you. Yeah, it does. I mean, for us, I use a. I mean, I would have choices too. I use. A, I have a notebook that I use every single day. Um, but not every. You know, we get further and further away from it. But yeah, yeah I mean, pens are a thing. Pens yeah. are important. Pens are important. I mean, right? Is there's that you've got the tip size, right? Like yeah. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. You have the color. You have a roller. Yeah. There's uh, you see? have a gel pen. Yeah, yeah. my there's husband gave me a pen last stuff. night. I said I need a pen. He gave me a pen. I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's not enough ink in yeah. here. Because how irritating is it when you when you're writing and then all of a sudden it runs out of right. the ink? Now right. you got it. Now you got to change stream of different ink, different uh, yeah. that I I want consistency. That's happened to me like when I've been like I said when I pull over and I'm like I'll be running out of yeah. ink and I'm like nope no I still have a lot to write <laughs> exactly. and I'm like I'm digging into the page I'm like I'm gonna remember this yeah you know like, right. I'm like there's no way and then do you know, it with pencil when I do you know there's there you such go. a thing as award winning ink I did not know that yes the problem solver sells pens with award winning ink I mean. There you go. Yeah. I love my pens, but you can't you can't use them on all paper. And it has a cap. You have to take the cap off. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a roller. I like the process of taking the cap off, too. Yeah. There's something ceremonious yeah. about that. But I'll even, like, I'll go to the, so I was, a couple weeks ago, I was in urgent care, and I see, it's like, they have their pen, like, the clean pens, the dirty pens. I'm like, <laughs> they all look fine to me. Like, they're, <laughs> like, like, don't mind if I like, do. You got a lot of pens. You don't right. need all those pens. <laughs> No way you need this. People must you know, right? I mean, so, he's, so a pen yeah. he's a pen thief. He's a pen thief. Or as my father says, thief. admitted though. Right. Admitted pen thief. <laughs> and what about paper? You like that little notebook? Yeah. Yeah. You like the paper it's on or do you just like it because it fits in your front pocket? I just like uh, cuz it fits in my front pocket. Like I have uh other like notebooks now that just, someone get like Someone gave it to me at work, and it's like because they know I like the little notebooks, but it's just like that long, and I'm like I didn't want to be mean to them, and I'm like I can't get that in my pocket. It's like gonna look, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna be like half of it's gonna this this is not gonna work. Yeah. But then I'm like yeah no thank you, and then yeah. right in there, but I'm walking around like hey it's, no it's all right. I got a metal <laughs> spiral right jabbing into my stomach, but hey you're an fine. author. Well, yeah. Steph is partial to planners. Oh, I love okay. a planner. And she thinks nothing of switching mid-year with her planner, yeah. which is incomprehensible to me. She likes the tactile experience of the paper. She likes stickers. She likes different types of pens for different subject matter. I love it. A I highlighter. It. I love the different textures of the paper. I, I get the it. Japanese planners. Even though it's in Japanese. So what? You know what? I like just, the paper. No one, and if people see you out with it, they don't know that you don't know Japanese. That's right. And well, if anything, they're impressed. She got That's me right. one, a Hobonichi, yeah. and I was excited until until you weren't. I couldn't read the Japanese. I said, "What does so it matter?" There, were, there are different sections to do different things, but they were in Japanese. Oh wait, so the. It'll say like so like the days of the week. The no, of the every, day. no, all of that's in English. Oh, okay, well, no, the I extra mean, special Meredith stuff. I mean, Meredith is being dramatic. The extra special stuff was in Japanese. She just didn't want to use it. I don't know any kanji. <laughs> I will have well, you who's know. That, who's that on? I mean, <laughs> wait for you've, had, you've wait. had plenty of time to learn kanji. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time ever, I've stayed in the same planner all year. So, see, we understand your pen experience. Yes. Yeah. And I, we don't find yeah. it odd. No, my not pen, at all. My pens are in English. Just saying. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I like to be cultural. I actually am transitioning out to what? of paper. Paper calendar. Wow. Although I will say, so I've been trying for a couple of years and uh, successfully I am now in my phone calendar. However... December, like for everyone, is a very busy month, and I had to put it down on paper. And there is something Fine. about, so when you say you write things down first, I have a notebook. I've had them for 24 years and doing the job that I do. Um, I'm very specific about the size as well. There is something that goes from the brain 
and that, that you write down. Obviously, we all know that with learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and that I can't, I wouldn't move away from. I do use notes in my phone. Um, I don't love the calendar as much as I like the, a hard copy, but it's just by necessity for today because I have, everybody's using electronic calendars. Yeah. So if we have a meeting or whatever, even for here, it's got to go in my electronic because I just don't have the time now to switch to do two. Right. And then stuff gets missed. Yeah. You were spending yeah. a lot of time on that calendar yeah. spread. Yeah. It was too much. Writing, erasing. Yeah. 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 Do you do electronic? Um, I'm not as far advanced as like I should be Yeah, with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Dealing with my phone and like any kind of electronic. It's one of those things where like... For example, my wife was on the phone with uh, X Fin Uber Eyes and whoever it was last week, and and the guy said like, Does, "Do you have Wi-Fi?" And I'm like, and my wife goes, "Do you have Wi-Fi?" And I'm like, "Is your Wi-Fi on?" And I said, "There's three bars." And so <laughs> she's she like looking at me, she's like, "I I can't." And then she's like talking to the guy, I'm like, all right. you know, like I don't these things, and my students make fun of me all the time, like these things that everyone else is already getting and has gotten like three years ago, yep. and I'm like, just starting to get, and they're like, how old are you? And I'm like, 49, and they're like, you should know all this already, and I'm like, I don't uh, Well, then, you're busy writing books. Well, right. it's not You're your not interest. sitting on your phone. If you were yeah. interested, right. right? But even like calendar, I just started using the uh, the calendar on my phone this year, and it's only because my, uh, like, again, my, she's like, let me put it in your calendar, and I'm like, I have a calendar? And I didn't even like, it was one of those things, I'm like, is it near the calculator? And, and I'm thinking like, and she's like, just let me see it. Do you no, have an Android? No. Well, you but have an your, iPhone? Your schedule probably iPhone, doesn't yeah. change every day. No, no, it doesn't. So like we the, have to, we yeah. have to have a calendar. Like the, uh, the, right. The Google calendar, I, I have to do a lot of lo- those because we have a lot of Zoom meetings. And oh, right, right. That's about as close to it as I get. Like, I don't, I don't put a lot into the calendar on my phone just because, well, like you said, I don't, there isn't much I have to put in it. So. Yeah. Do you stay friendly with the kids once they leave the detention center? We're not really supposed to, like, we're not really supposed to connect with them or anything. Yeah. But if I see, like, I've seen a couple out and about that they're just, they're like, hey, how you doing? I'm, hey, how you, you know, I'm friendly right. with them. But yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, I'll shake their hand and whatnot. And, yeah. Yeah. But I saw one kid once out with his kid, and I was with my son. And, oh, like, wow. And he's like, hey, this is my son. You know, and I'm like, this is my son. So oh, nice. it was... Yeah, it was like every now and then I've it's only happened like twice, but yeah. Yeah. When is your third book coming out? March twenty fifth. Wow. Yeah. Are you making money off of your books yet? I mean, yeah. It's, so I'm making royalties off it. Like nothing you know, nothing crazy, but you yeah. know, it's just just the idea that that it's you know, there's like it's in the hundreds, like the amounts that have sold and whatnot. So just that boggles my mind. Like my first book, it was a a middle grade horror book that maybe sold like 30 copies, but I was excited about those 30 copies. And yeah. now yeah. this is just like, what? And it's, it'd be certain things like retailers will buy, you know, like X amount of copies. I'm like, retailers, that's pretty cool. Like that wasn't happening that's with awesome. the other ones. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's, it's doing pretty well. Like my, uh, there's certain on the retailer websites that like the ones that all, they all get their, um, their books from and whatnot. It'll, it'll have like specific um, charts. So mine's one of them is that I'm on is um, young adult Christian fantasy, and I hit like both of those books hit number one on that, and they and the second book is still at number two, and for and it came out in September. So are you doing audio? There at some point I think there was talk of an audio. So will you read it? No, it wouldn't be from me. They have a they have a I guess an actress that would read it. So. Imagine. I mean, I imagine. I guess that's what you call them, actresses. I don't know. Do you teach girls too, or just boys? Just boys. Yeah, yeah. There are girls. There are um, girls detention centers in the region, but I don't teach in one of those. I have colleagues that teach the, there, but not me. It's incredible. It's wow. so exciting. How long are they in the classroom for each day? So we have them for it's you know, class starts at like eight. 8.30, so, and then it ends at, like, 2.30, so it's similar to a regular school day. Yeah. And then what do they do after school? Hours. After school, they could either, they'll, they'll either bring them to the gym to play basketball and whatnot, or they'll just, uh, there's rec rooms, so they'll either go watch TV or play ping pong and, you know. Free, free like time. That. Yeah, basically. How's yeah. the food there? I like it. And then they everyone makes fun of me for liking it. I'm like, 
free and it's you know <laughs> they have a salad bar it's a good salad bar and then they i but almost there's nothing there i won't eat and so the kids are like what is wrong with you i'm like i don't know i'm like i like it i could be eating you know in my mind i'm like i could be eating anything i'm eating this yeah I'm like but they're like we have to eat this i'm like i don't but i'm like i do right well they have thanksgiving tomorrow yeah so they had um so they had this past week, they had a family engagement thing where families came in and they kind of, someone, staff cooked like turkeys and for them and whatnot, all the fixings. So, and the kids got to dress up and they got to dress up in their court clothes. So it made them feel like, oh, you know, yeah. a little more dressed yeah, up. So yeah. they do, staff does stuff like that that really, you know, like I said, where they, wherever they can here and there, they try to normalize it as much as they can, you know, make it not as, as stressful for the kids to be there. So. What kind of things do you have to do to land in a detention center? Across the board. Like, there's kids that have, uh, I haven't necessarily had any, but there's kids that have killed people. There's uh, pretty much, honestly, anything you can think of. So it, you, it's the age that requires you to go to a de- te- detention center yeah, instead of so jail. If you, you know, if I believe it's 18, so if you commit your crime after 18, then you would you I wouldn't see you like the chi- the kid that I that we had until he was like twenty one he's he's he was com- he committed his crime before he was eighteen so that's gotcha. why we that's right. why he was there but yeah basically that's what dictates it so it's so heavy it is like it's just so heavy it's just a whole world we don't know anything about yeah it is it's a cult it was at first it was a culture shock but now I would I would never go. I mean, I've had offers like, yeah, come teach public school here. And I'm like, no way. No, these are my, this is my school. Like, these are the guys that I like working with. So they're your peeps. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where yep. you, you get used to it. And then like, when you see these kids succeed, then you're like, their, their face lights up and you don't see that all the time. And I'm like, that right there is why I'm coming back every day. Oh, I right. love that. Yeah. I do That's too. why I signed the contract every year. You know, yeah. it's one of those things. So how many years have you been there? So this is my 17th. Wow. Yeah. What would have to happen to be life changing with one of your books? So right now you're accomplishing a goal that you've been doing for a long time and it's exciting. You know, you've got, you know, you're, some successes here. What what happens for an author in order for it to be life changing? Well, let's see. I mean, that's already at this stage is already life changing because it's something I've always wanted. I just always wanted to be a published author. So at this stage, it's already like life change. Like that's a dream met, and so it's one of those things that anything that happens for me, like getting on the New York Times bestseller list, that would be like that's the next level of dream. Got it. And then like if I if it would ever get turned into like a movie or you know if it ever got option for that, that is like these are all things that are like I'm living the dream right now. Those yep. are like the mind blowing, got like it, like the next level mind blowing part of that dream. So. And can you? Is there but anything? if those never happened, I right. I am totally fulfilled. You know, like I said, I can check that dream out. Like that, I've been working towards it for like twenty five years. So the fact that it's here and it's happening, it's amazing. Well, and you see that in your social media posts too. I love it. How excited you are about you know each one of these, and you yeah. had posted that you know you were number one, and it's just yeah, like that's surreal. Like just that, and you know, he'll send me the screenshot of the thing, and and. He's like, yeah, number one. And you go, oh, you dropped to number two. You know, but even like <laughs> dropping the number two, I'm like, Come on. that's insane. Right. And then, right. and because he had told me that, you know, once you're in that top 10, like this, when it first happened with the first book, he goes, once you're in that top 10, like all the different retailers, they see that top 10. So he's like, they pay attention to it. And then he was right. Like all of a sudden, like they start, you know, 30 books will be ordered here. 100 books will be ordered here. You know, it's like one of those things where you're like, whoa. Well, and wow. I mean, I, I, we're money motivated because we're in sales. So forgive me going back to the money. But when you're when you're actually paid for something that you love to do, yeah, it's 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 a whole new game. It, oh, it definitely is. Like and there even that changed my mindset for writing, like right. for writing. I used to like, you know, I, the goal was I'm like. I just want to get, you know, I, I don't I don't even care if it's anything I want to write anymore. I want to write what people like, you know, and, you know, even that, right. that, but even at that point, I'm not exactly true to myself because it's not what I want to write. It's what right. I think. Right. It's what I think, you know, the masses yeah. want to read. Right. Which, you know, that's not the way to do it. But it was like, it. that's the way I was doing it. Then all of a sudden when this worked out, I'm like, oh, well, now I can just, I'm writing what I want to write. Like I'm writing, I'm exploring 
I'm having fun with that world and those books, and I'm like, this is cool. Like, there's no more stress anymore about the writing itself, right. you know. Well, and you're validated, mm. yeah. right? So yeah, these two have validated, which if you, there had to be some question that maybe I, maybe I don't belong, maybe I don't belong, because you weren't published before. Right. And now you're published. Yeah. And you're like, oh. There's always that, like, even... There's always that imposter syndrome, right? Like, and even now, even after those two books, like there'll be times when I'm like, I'll I'll be reading something else from someone else, and I'm like, oh my god, they're good. And then it's one of those things where I'm like, <laughs> I'm not that good, you know. But then it's yes. like, it's like, dude, you write in a different voice, and you have a target right. audience, and they love that voice, and like, you you know that you always bring yourself back to it. And then again, my my publisher, he's great at like even when he doesn't know that I'm going through that like brief imposter syndrome thing, he'll shoot me a text or a message or something that like lifts me up right away. Like the dude, he's great. Like he's, he's really good at that. He's like, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, you, you should be happy that, you know, you're at this number or you sold, someone just placed an order for the, you know, and I'm like, this is, you know, you time it perfectly every so time. Exciting. You know, I feel like we get that too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? Because yeah. if we're having a lull in our sales and we're like, I, I, you know, I'm like, maybe I'm not that good. Yeah. Like, why isn't anyone maybe calling me? Yeah. 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 But I think it happens for everyone too. My husband said to me yesterday, um, how'd you sleep last night? You know, this is the state yeah. of the game where we're at, you know, nobody sleeps. <laughs> and um, I said, well, terribly, you know, and I know you were up too. And he said, I know I was up for hours. And, and my, he's done amazing things in his life. He has nothing to feel badly about yeah. or, you know, not at all. But he, he said, for hours, I was going through every horrible thing I've done or every wrong, oh, every ill, geez. every uh, thing I haven't accomplished. And I laughed. He yeah. was, and, and he said, no, no, because my laugh, yeah. you know, was like, no, he was like, no, it was really bad. I was like, no, you and everybody else. Right. We all do that. Right. This is the stage of the game. You're not unique in that sense where you feel horrible about yourself at two in the morning. Right. We right. all do it. So let me normalize that. And you just got to say to yourself, cut it out but yeah. folks that's what gummies are for <laughs> <laughs> and i'm talking 10 milligrams when you go to bed it takes away all the voices it's the most amazing thing it kills the doubt yes yeah. i wake yeah. up and then i go back to sleep i don't have those thoughts anymore that was me last night i used the oil on my feet Did so it stephanie work? sent me magnesium oil for my feet and I've been ingesting the magnesium, but I'm realizing it's too much. I got to cut back on it oh. a little bit. And so I tried that. I woke up the next morning. Meredith K. Yeah. No there middle of the night, waking up. Wow. Yeah. That's so yeah. great. Yeah. So hard a, at this stage of the I got game. a CPAP machine now. Oh. So like that's like, a game changer, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, it is. My friends the, who have yeah. got them were like, oh, my God, I'm so much healthier. Yeah. The sleep, like the next day, even if I only get like six hours, the next day, you, you feel like you get like eight hours. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. The There's sleep, nothing like a good night's sleep. Yeah. Really. The honestly. sleep study was weird. I like, bet. Because they put all the wires, like, Damien, and I'm like. <laughs> and they're like, go to sleep now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to sleep. Like, you have wires on me. Yeah. Like, not in me, but on yeah. me. And I'm like, right. I can't do this. And then they're like, you'll be fine. And then it was like, the guy's like, you'll be fine in five, four. I'm like, this isn't hitting it. You know? And I'm like, he's like, <laughs> the guy was like joking around, though. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, all right, I got this. And he goes, I'll put the TV on. And I'm like, well, that'll get me to sleep every time. Oh, you know? the TV does yeah. it. Yeah. I'm like that with Instagram. Yeah, the amount of yeah. If he if they just yeah that too. If they just put me on a couch in there and not in a bed, I'd yeah. be like, yeah, that's yeah. You know. But you were it was total sleep. Yeah. For how long? Ah, uh, so I guess that night the guy said he just said you had a good sleep, you know, six and a half hours, something like that, and I'm like, it's not a great sleep, but you yeah. Know. Can you imagine sleeping eight sound hours? No, I really can't. Let's go back to dreaming about like huge successes with your. So March will be the third in your trilogy. Yep. Um, you have success and success. And so we'll see what happens with the third. Yeah. And I'm also tinkering around with um, uh, just like so a couple different people will be like, oh, like the story behind the story is a pretty good story, too. And I'm like, oh, and they're like, you should put that down in a book. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, you know, I'm focusing on it. But then all of a sudden, maybe like a couple weeks ago, I started like writing some story like anecdotes from my from teaching and whatnot in and, and i'm like oh all right well maybe there's something i there, agree so. that's mm. what yeah. really hooked me into yeah. reading your book it is the story behind yeah. the story so i started started doing that too so i got a, i kind of got both going on right now so which is good 
in the sense that if I get writer's block or one, I can just shift to the other. Oh, right. And then, you know, back and forth. So, so I've had this um, dream. It will be materialized at some point. But that you have inspired me. But that I would go to Ames Free once a week for an hour. I've had this on my to-do list for two years, maybe. And I have yet to do it. So I want to go do it if I can Very get it cool. into my schedule. Yeah, I think you can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be well, not at Ames Free, but I'll be at the Quesad House December 16th doing an author talk. There, oh, so. yeah. Which that, that's cool. So the the librarian Ames Free, she said, would you be interested in doing a talk? And I'm like, like you, I've like, I grew up reading books there for like. Yeah. My mother would bring me there, and I'd be like reading books about pirates, like. That's all I read yeah. about. I, I don't know why I thought, like, maybe, you know, I grew up thinking, I'm like, they're, they're going to be a bigger problem than they are. But, like, no, I have yet to see a Like actual, quicksand? Yeah, I have yet to see an actual pirate. I'm like, I've been I've been trained on how to outwit you guys for, like, ever. And I'm like, I haven't had a chance yet. But There is quicksand in Alaska, I will tell you. All right, well, the mud flats there. Yeah. Right, um, I wanted to have, I have another question for you. Yeah. Um, are you partial to bookmarks, too? I usually fold a page over, but okay. I, I, I will use it. If it's someone else's book that I borrowed, I'll use a bookmark. I love a bookmark. And this bookmark, I want you to see which one I used for John's book. <gasps> that was my Yankee swap. <laughs> Steph, tell what it is. That's a bookmark from my favorite restaurant, Gourmet Garden. It says GG on it. Oh, Gourmet Garden. Nice. So the, yes. tell us how, why. It they... is a fancy bookmark. <laughs> well, I am a VIP there. Okay. So the manager usually gives me a gift every year, and I believe that was last year's gift. Nice. Bookmark with GG on it. Now, where is this restaurant? This this restaurant is at Cobb <laughs> Corner. Cobb. There's no ass on Cobb's, call it Cobb's, even though everyone says Cobb's. Yeah, it's I mean, at Cobb I've been Corner. Cobb's forever. Yeah, Cobb's. It oh, should my, be Cobb's. My daughter can't take it. Mom, please put an ass on it. I go, I will not. So it's at Cobb Corner Gourmet Garden. All right. And I'm... if you go there, they have a Stephanie special. All right. Well, that settles it. Yeah. Yeah. It is good food. Yeah. Nice yeah. people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Cobb Corner. I can't even. Cobb Corner. What was the mall that it was? Tri-Town we Mall. Up? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Remember the Tri-Town Mall? I do. I do. <laughs> Did you guys wait, graduate no, wait together? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? I remember. The, wasn't it called the Village Mall? Yeah. It was the Tri-Town Mall, the Village Mall. Yeah. Wasn't it Tri-Town? It was Tri-Town Mall. Tri-Town Mall, Village Mall, Cobb Corner. No, John's much I younger don't know. than me. He's much older? Much younger. Oh, much younger. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I was gonna say much 95? older. Ninety five. He looks good. Ninety three. Ninety three. Oh, oh, just two years. Yeah. Huh. But it was village. I don't even remember Triton. I remember Village Mall. I remember the village. Am I took I wrong? song lessons there. No, you. I mean, you could easily be right. Wait, I just, now I don't know. I remember Village. I took yeah. sewing lessons there. Libby Keister. Oh, it oh, was, Libby, was, uh, my old neighbor. Like a fabric place there. Yeah, I don't remember that. I remember the record store. Right when you get in there, it's like yeah. Right there I remember the, the record store. Yeah. Remember record remember. stores in general? I miss the I went to Westgate store. Mall the other day. I haven't been since I was about 15. Westgate wow. Mall, for those listening, is in Brockton, <laughs> Massachusetts. It's. I had to explain to my daughter that um, if you wanted clothes, this is where you had to come. Yeah. You had to go to the mall. <laughs> you, if you wanted to have fabric on you, this is where you went. <laughs> It was such a different and foreign concept yeah. for her. Oh, I yeah. said, you know what? Let's go to the shoe store and we'll. I'll, you can just try shoes on. And if you like one of them, we'll buy them and you can leave. Was she like, wow. <laughs> yeah, really? Because we buy them all online Let's, and then just return. We'll stop by the video store on the way <laughs> yes, home. Exactly. Pick up a movie. Yeah, from Blockbuster. Yes, VHS. I think I still have old gift cards from Blockbuster. I don't know if you can use I'm them. I'm terrible yeah. with gift cards. I'm terrible. Yeah, don't give her a gift card. The worst. Well, John, Katie, it's been amazing having you on. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. And we look forward to following your success. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's exciting. It. It's exciting stuff. I'm going to become an author. Meredith K. Keach, author. I think you should. <laughs> I have to start writing. That would, yes, you, you have 25 that, years behind you. That's the best you. way to start. <laughs> that's definitely the best way to start. All well, right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank have you a wonderful so Thanksgiving. Much. Thank you All for right, the pen. Take care. We'll see you. Thank you. <laughs>